The new same free model has just been integrated into the Autolytics framework. So now you can use it directly out of the box. It's just a few lines of code. So this is a pretty crazy model because we can just prompt it what we want to detect and the segmentation mask that we get around our objects are very high quality. Very, very low detail. Every single pixel is pretty much perfect and it can also track across several frames or across a video. So this is a very good foundation model. This is version three. They're definitely going to get out with more versions in the future, but this is already pretty cool. So this could be a foundation model that you use to go in and do auto annotation. So you label your data, you reduce a lot of manual work, and then you can train the other YOLO from Autolytics to run fastest inference, possible real-time detections this same model here is definitely not a real-time model that runs on edge devices and does real life work on the edge but it's more a foundation model that can be used for prompting single images if you just have a single video and so on let's just jump straight into the autolytics documentation it's fully integrated into the autolytics framework so you can go and hit and use it i'm going to go through the documentation here so you can see the overview what it can be used for you can choose a single point you can have positive examples, you can have negative examples, you can prompt it what you want to detect, and then it's pretty much just going to detect that in your images and also videos. Then we're going to see an example how you can run it in code and just see all the different cool examples. If you take a look at the overview, you can see the level of details that we get in our segmentation mask, and it has very good understanding. So usually with the AI-based model convolutional network and so on, it has no reasoning at all. You can think more about the same free model as a VLM, where we have the large language models, but we also have the detection part of it. So it has some reasoning about how do the objects act like look and think more like a human would, where the CNNs and all that, they're just detecting what it has been trained on. So this is pretty cool. You can see the level of detail with all the different objects and we also get an ID for each of them and it's very good at doing tracking across frames too. So you can prompt it with text, image examples, you can combine it as well, it's very good for zero shot learning, so red apple, pursing, wearing a hat. Here's some key performance metrics, you can take a look at it, you can see the architecture here as well. So DTR based architecture, the checking transformer, we have a tracker sitting on top of it as well, which is very similar to the Sand 2, and then they have just optimized it. So they have a text encoder encoding the text coming in from the prompts, then you have an image encoder, and then you pretty much just have text and image embedding pairs, then you can then throw into your both your detector model and also your tracker, and then you'll get the mask out, which you can then merge together. They have this memory bank here, which is why it's so good at doing tracking and also just keeping track about objects behind it. So if there's occlusions, you can see these penguins, some of them is behind each other. It will do a really good job of tracking through occlusions as well with this memory bank that they have integrated. Here are some key innovations. You can go and take a look at it. Some different data sets that have been trained on. 5.2 million images in this one here. Here we have some noun phrases, a bunch of different masks and so on. So it's just a huge scale data set that it has been trained on. But all we have to do to pretty much get started is just pip install it. So we open the terminal, pip install autolytics. I already have it installed. There we go. Now we have pip install autolytics. Make sure you upgrade it. So we're going to do it with this flag here. So we have it in the newest version. If you run into any errors, it's most likely because you don't have the newest version. Then there's a guide here how to use it. I have a script that we can go through it, but you can both use the text-based concept segmentation. So this is just a prompt. We have the model here for the same free predictor segment with image examples. So you can have a reference image and then you can use that as the predictions too. Feature-based inference for efficiency. This is also a pretty cool one. So you can just extract the features in images once and then you can use them for multiple segmentation queries, basically just to improve efficiency because you don't have to recompute it, but you're pretty much just caching it. Video concept segmentation, it can track optic instances across the video. So it's pretty much just running it through the images, but it also has the tracking effect as we went over in the architecture. So all these different things here are available. You can go in and test it out, but let's now jump into the code and see some examples. So I have a bunch of different videos and images that we're going to flow through. And this is just the exact same examples, just copy pasted from the documentation. So you can do that yourself. Everything will be down in the description. 
So the first one is just inference on an image with a text prompt. So all we have to do is from Autolytics models sam.predict, we have our sam free segment, semantic predictor. We create an instance of that. Here we're going to override the configuration of the original sam free model. So we can, you can set the confidence score if you want to run segmentation, prediction, what model files that you want to use, and it's just going to download everything automatically. We also have this BP simple vocabulary file, which is pretty much just for the vocabulary of our detections with our text descriptions and all that, that we need to initialize the same free model. Again, everything will be down in the description and I'll just have this text file here. It doesn't really make sense, but it needs this for the configuration when we set up the model. Then we're going to have an image of just a dog. So I have this dog image somewhere dogs.png. We're going to take this one here and then we only want to segment out the black dog here just to see if it has reasoning about different colors and just what's going on in the image. So all we have to do is just open up our terminal, make sure that you pave install and upgrade Autolytics. And then after that, we can just run our same free inference, autolytics.py. It will create the instance. It will set the image to dogs.png. And we're going to run it through some videos in just a second. So here we run into problem IO path. Let's pip install that, rerun the script. So it's just back into the documentation here. So with the same free weights, we need to actually go in and download them. It can't be downloaded automatically because you need to accept the terms from Meta before being able to use it. All the other models from Autolytics, they are directly available, available automatically downloaded. So we need to go in here, go into the GitHub repository. We need to go down and find where we can download from the Hawk and Face repo. You need to go in and act like request access to it. Once you have gotten access, it just takes five, 10 minutes, at least in my case, and then you can go in and get the actual model. So we have our files and different versions. So if we go in, we have the same free.pt. That's the one that we have to grab, 3.5 gigabytes. So you can see this is a very huge model compared to the Autolytics YOLO models, which is only like, 30 to 50 megabytes. So this is definitely a big foundation model, which won't be able to run real time on the edge. We can now go back into our code again. Let's just wait here until it has been downloaded. Once downloaded, we can run it. First of all, we're just going to have image with the text prompt and then after multi text prompt as well. So we can have multiple classes that we're detecting. You can pretty much ask it anything like any other AI model out there. So that's the same free. We drop them over here, just specify the path to it. This is just gonna be in our root directory. There we go. Let's rerun it. And now we should be able to load the model. It's gonna use my CPU here. It's gonna run locally, use my CPU. Let's see how fast it can run and do the inference. We throw in our image and we will get the results back. Then the results here, then you can extract it, just print the results, get it out in the exact same way as the, all the other Autolytics examples. But then we have videos covering that in full details, how you can extract the examples exactly in the way that you want and use it in your own applications and projects. So while it's running here, we're just going to pass in the black dog. This is just a single image. We have the multi image as well. So now we can see that it actually like ran through here successfully. It took 400 milliseconds inference, so it's actually like pretty fast. That's two, three frames per second that we can get. And we can go inside our runs directory. And we now have our prediction with our dog. Okay. This is very cool. We can see the segmentation mass that we have. We have a black dog, 97% confidence. This is pretty cool. Now we can just go in, comment this out. We can try run one of the other examples. Let's just make it a bit bigger. Here we can see this is just with multiple classes that we can throw in. It's just this part here that we need. We rerun the script and that's all we have to do. And this is on a CPU. So if you run this on DPU, it's just only gonna get faster. Definitely not suitable for real time detection. And it's also a very large model, which is not efficient for smaller tasks. So very good task is to use this as a foundation model to label your data set, then fine tune a YOLO model and then run that in production. So see here how long this is gonna take. First of all, it's gonna start up the model, load in the image and all that is not act like an inference time. So if you run multiple frames after each other, if you set up a loop for that, it's gonna run significantly faster. The next one is just video inference with black car examples. So we just have a full video. It's going to track through it as well. And then we just have our output. 
So for last stream, we can set stream equal to true. It will send the result back. We can see this act like took 10 seconds to run this inference with the multiple uh, prompts here. It has to do the reasoning, it has to do the outputs and everything, and it has to warm up the model. So it's definitely better if you run it for more images or just a video. Let's try it with the video example. And while that one is running, we can go in and take a look at our prediction eight. So we'll just get all the folders, it will save it automatically. And now we have our cars.jpg. We detect a red car and we have some black cars as well. Now we're just going to do it in the exact same way. This is how you can extract them, but we're going to do it on videos. So now it's running the video inference. Again, this is just going to process the whole video. So it will definitely take some time. And we also just have the white dog example on the video. And at the end we have walking penguins. So this is a pretty cool one because some of them are actually like occluding each other. So if you just take a look at the output results concatenated, this is the penguin video from the last example in the code. Again, make sure everything will be down in the description so you can run it all. So we have the penguins here with tracking all the penguins, also the ones here occluded in the background and I'll just play the videos and we keep the track ID so you can see that's pretty consistent and we have an example with our video with our black dog and also just our black car driving around so we only track those. You can see the track IDs are pretty much persistent throughout the whole video. This is much better tracker than any of the other like smaller S trackers that you can use as well but this is just a very cool one but also make sure that this is a very large foundation model and you really just need to use it for the good use cases. Hope you enjoyed this video here. Go ahead and check it out. It's now fully integrated with Autolytics, the same free model. Use it. Throw down in the comment section what cool projects you can use this foundation model for versus the YOLO models. And then I just hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy learning.